Hi, in this slide we're going to tie two things together. Um, service metrics, things that we measure to try to improve our service, and how those service metrics improve one or more elements of a customer's total procurement cost. But in other words, because if we're going to get paid for service value, we have got to make our service visible, because it tends to be invisible, and we have to make uh, the economic benefits to the customer, the, the hidden costs, they don't even know they have, make them visible and show how we're reducing them. So they're going, you're right. Although you're charging a higher price, you are the lowest total procurement cost. So for example, we can, we can identify a target niche of customers we're going to go after, and for that niche, we can do an analysis of all the items that they have bought and find the most popular items that all of them have bought and beef those items up so we have higher fill rates. The idea of tuning your fill rates based on customer popularity and profitability will be revisited multiple times in this, this, this video uh, story. Um, but if we have one-stop shopping in stock better than anybody else, that means the customer can make one phone call and say, hey, here's everything I want. We say, no problem, you've got it. So they're going to have a larger average order size, which also will reduce paperwork costs. Because alternatively, they'd have to call two, three people to get all that they want, or call us and we'll say, fine, we'll ship it from three different locations with three sets of paperwork, or we'll ship some of it now and back order some of it and get it out to you with two transactions, two sets of paperwork, and, and less, uh, less uh, timeliness as far as the stuff you may need. So one-stop shop fill rates in stock is, is foundational. If we don't have fill rates, why bother with zero errors, on-time delivery, good people, etc., because we don't have it today. Uh, so we have to really focus on fill rates first on a niche-by-niche -niche basis. We don't go out and sell the fact that we have high cycle count accuracy, but that in turn actually improves fill rates. So that's something we do internally to make sure we have high fill rates, and there will be a, a video clip on that later on. If we have a late cutoff, uh, for uh, next day delivery, or we have a late of uh, a, a, a quick delivery response. In other words, if you call us 15 minutes in advance, confirm that we have something, place an order and say, I'll be down to pick it up uh, at your counter, and we promise it will get you in and out in five minutes. Time is money. That allows somebody who's you know hustling around town to, to do one more job at the end of the day, kind of thing, and, and that's that makes a big difference. Their P&L by the end of the year and their customer satisfaction. Uh, we may say that we will call you back if there are any deviations on your service, uh, on your order, because then that'll save you the 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 problem of hey, where's the stuff that I thought I was going to get? Now I don't have it. Now I got potential downtime. I've got to scramble to get rid of that. Um, let me get rid of some of the stuff here. Uh, we could say we have zero errors, and because we have zero errors, that means that you will have less exp mistake curing, expediting downtime, and paperwork. Because when there are you know there are mistakes, it might not be physical stuff, but the price is wrong, uh, or something like that. So it creates more paperwork in the form of credits to 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 rectify the the response. I've already been through quick response time here as far as how it improves their uptime economics. Uh, ditto with 100% on-time delivery. If we don't get it there uh, consistently on time, then they're going to have expediting downtime uh, realities. Uh, physical replenishment systems, if the, the customer actually has inventory in-house, then uh, where is it stored? Is there a place for everything? Is everything in its place? Are all the items tuned to monthly consumption uh, forecasting? Um, and are they topped off on a front regular basis so all the inventory tends to go down together? So when you need something, you may need multiple things, which in increases your uh, average order size per paperwork cost. So how we go and tune the, the customer's inventory allows them, on average, to have the lowest average inventory investment with the less, lowest maintenance costs, and yet the highest fill rates and in, uptime economics from that inventory that, that they need to you know, support their business. And then lastly, I've got down here um, heroic recoveries, and right down here. And uh, what we're saying here is we don't, we don't make mistakes. We have zero errors. But if we do have a mistake, then we'll do something that will make you so happy that you will 
have least amount of expediting and mistake curing costs, we may even pay you money on an unconditional guarantee to zero those effectively out uh, and minimize the amount of downtime that you'll have. And we don't just fight the fire and put the fire out. We learn from these things. So next time, magic words, next time, we will uh, not make the same mistake twice. Thanks.